Welcome back. This week, we're gonna be working on a super simple upgrade for my lathe. A bit of a cosmetic upgrade, really, but more importantly, this is an upgrade that's actually gonna have a pretty substantial impact on how it feels to use the machine. Also, I'm gonna to get to use my taper attachment for the first time, so that's pretty exciting. Let me just show you what I'm talking about, and I promise it'll all make a lot more sense. These are the handles on my lathe. Well, that's a lie. These are two of the handles on my lathe, but these are the two that I use most often, so these are the two that we're gonna do first. I also have this type of handle all over the machine as well, but we'll talk about these later. As you can hopefully tell, these handles are made of plastic. Now, I know what you're about to say, but plastic, it's the space age material of the future. Tupperware is made of plastic. And don't get me wrong, I like leftovers just as much as the next guy. But if you've ever used a really nice quality machine, like a South Bend, for example, you'll notice that none of the handles are made of plastic. And in case you don't know, let me be the first to tell you that there is a huge difference between grabbing a piece of plastic and grabbing a piece of steel. So I would like to replace these plastic handles with handles made from steel. But before we can do that, we need to take some measurements first. So this is the original handle. Like I said, it's pretty simple. The way that it works is you've got this bolt that goes through the handle. This end screws into the lathe. And then this nut is a jam nut. And you use this to set the length of this bolt so that when you screw it into the lathe, it doesn't screw all the way down and tighten against the handle, preventing it from spinning. I'm gonna replace all of these parts. It's silly that you need this jam nut when they could have just made a bolt that was the right length so that it wouldn't tighten against the handle. Now, at this point, I'm sure that some of you are thinking that this is a complete waste of time. Why would you even bother? And you can't wait to jump down into the comments and tell me exactly that. But if you've got a mini lathe or really any other machine that originally came with plastic handles, do yourself a favor and just replace one of them with a handle made from steel and then tell me it wasn't worth it. This original handle is right around two and three quarter inches in length. I think I'm gonna make mine about a half inch shorter at two and a quarter. Then I'll give myself a quarter inch counter bore in the back end. All right, got a really simple drawing here. I think I've got all the dimensions I need, so let's get started. I'll be using 304 stainless for this project. It's a really great material for this sort of thing. It holds up really well to fluids and things like the oils from your hands. First things first, as usual, I'll face the material and then drill a center for tail support. Next up, I'm just gonna pull out sort of what I feel like is gonna be enough material in terms of length. And then I'm gonna start turning down to the major diameter that I have marked on my drawing. However, nothing is written in stone at this point, And throughout the entire process, I'm gonna be adjusting and kind of just slowly working the part into shape until I get something that basically feels right for what I'm after. Here I'm just laying out basic features like the overall length and where I think I want the taper to end based on my drawing. But again, if these don't feel right to me as they begin to take shape, then I will make changes to this on the fly. Before I can start turning in the basic overall profile of the handle, I need to set up my taper attachment. This will be the first time that I've used this attachment, and as I think you'll see, 
This is a pretty basic taper attachment and it isn't super well integrated into the machine. So it requires a significant amount of setup and breakdown in between uses. You can't just leave it connected all the time. And you also need to disconnect the cross slide screw from the nut completely in order to use it. That means your depth of cut is controlled entirely by the compound when cutting a taper. I also installed this thing myself, so the whole time that I'm here setting it up, I'm wondering whether or not it's even going to work at all, or if it's just going to bind up and cause a bunch of issues. However, to my absolute amazement, it appears to be working just fine, so we are ready to go. So I'm looking at this and feeling it, and I'm thinking that this is actually a little bit chunkier than I really want. I think I want more of a taper on this. It's just, it's gonna be really chunky and heavy on the hand wheel. So I will slowly increase the taper and just kind of slowly massage this into shape until it's something that, I don't know, just feels right. All right, so this is feeling pretty okay, I think. I ended up taking off a lot more than I originally thought I would, at least compared to my drawing anyway. Also, I have switched to high-speed steel for my finish cuts. I want to try and get a really nice, smooth, um, almost like a matte sheen on this that's gonna feel really nice in the hand. And I know that high-speed steel will give me that finish on 304 stainless. Um, so yeah, I switched to high speed steel and I'm hoping I can get a really, really nice smooth finish out of that. By the way, this is the parting tool holder that was made in a recent video, just using an old vintage high-speed steel parting blade to part 304 stainless steel with no issues. Like I said, they work really well, so if you haven't made one, you can check out that video. Drawings are on my Patreon. Well, that's looking pretty good. I think it's gonna work out nicely. It feels really good in the hand. You should be able to see how the taper comes to right around here and then flattens out. That flat spot is more than just a cosmetic feature. That is what I'm gonna hold on to when I flip this around to drill the through hole and the counter bore in the back end. If you're planning on making something like this for yourself, that's something that you might want to consider. You're going to end up with a tapered part at some point, and depending on your order of operations, you might need to hold on to that part again, and if so, that's something that you're going to want to plan for. So, the last thing that I have to do is clean up this back side, drill my through hole, give it a counter bore, and the handle will be done.
Now, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but I mean, come on, you have to admit, that is looking pretty darn nice. That finish came out fantastic. It just feels really nice in the hand. And it's got a really nice heft to it, but it's not crazy heavy or anything like that. I think it's going to work out just about perfect. So I guess there's only one thing left to do now. I made another one. I also made these little Delrin washers off camera. They just go in here like this and then the screw drops in and that's pretty much the assembly right there. So let's try them on and see how they work out. I also realized that I could reuse these original screws if I just shorten the threads a little bit. So that saved me a little bit of work there. Oh, that is so much nicer. I don't really know how to describe it if you don't already know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's not like there's anything wrong with this machine. This is a fine machine, but I don't know. It's sort of like the difference between utility and luxury. Plastic gets the job done, but stainless steel feels luxurious. And I mean, come on. You can't tell me that doesn't just look so much nicer. I can tell you that it feels a lot nicer, that's for sure. So there it is, from utility to luxury. My stainless steel lathe handles. I know it might seem like a small thing, but I spend a lot of time at this machine. And these two handles are what I'm reaching for most often. So these handles actually play a pretty big role in what it feels like to use this machine. And I gotta be honest, this feels like a luxury machine now. Well, I guess that's about it for this one. I said that it was going to be a super simple project, and I think it was. However, in my opinion at least, this is a project that is well worth the time invested. When you spend as much time doing something as I do standing in front of these machines, the little details really add up. It's the same reason people buy really nice leather wrappings to put around their steering wheels or stainless steel shifter knobs for their cars. Aesthetics and fine details do matter, that's why you don't find plastic handles on something like a Brown and Sharp, a Bridgeport, or a South Bend. As usual, if you have made it this far into the video, thank you so very much. I do sincerely appreciate each and every single person who watches, especially when you watch this far into the video. It lets the algorithm know that you enjoyed it, which means that it will be shared with more people, so thank you. Of course, an extra special thank you to my patrons, the people who find value in what I do. I cannot possibly convey to you how much I appreciate it. All that I can offer is a simple thank you, so thank you. If you are already a subscriber, thank you for that as well. If you haven't subscribed, but you like what I do here and you feel like I've earned it, give me a like and a subscribe. If you feel like I haven't, let me know what I can do better in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, get out there, make something awesome. Most importantly, have some fun, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon.